Hey, y'all, I'm so excited to make this announcement. Fanatics Fan Fest NYC. It's the first of its kind, a three-day fan event where sports, collecting, and pop culture collide. August 16th through the 18th at the Javits Center. Meet us there. We're going to be there recording live right there on stage. Signing autograph, taking pictures with fans, and much more. We may even kiss babies. They're bringing the biggest sports podcast from around the world so you fans can be a part of this experience. We will be sharing the stage with some of the greatest icons and athletes of all time. Derek Jeter, Tom Brady, Sabrina Ionescu, Allen Iverson. Eli and Peyton Manning will all be there, and we're going to share a lot of stories and laughs. Make sure you'll be there. Tickets are on sale right now. You got to visit fanaticsfest.com to learn more and buy your tickets. We hope to see you there. People don't fight regular no yeah, more. You know what, yeah. what you were saying? We was gonna beat up Frame Martin because he was late. Man, that was we jumping. Here. Now we was gonna jump. Hey, I don't know. No problem. What's up? How you doing? What up, Joe? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, dog? Whatever. What's up? How you doing, man? You ever seen these G shocks? Hey, but saying why you look at it like this though? Why he gonna squint like he can't see? Squint man gonna let him see the watch no better. That's true. <laughs> Man, <we're good. laughs> Hold up, limitless, take a stomach cap, pinning it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless, take a stomach cap, pinning it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, Trust, limitless, take a stomach cap, pinning it. I father here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh. Welcome to the show. Frank Martin, 18 and 0, 12 knockouts. About to be in one of the biggest fights of the year versus Javante Davis. This is Fred Taylor, Channing Crowder. I'm Ryan Clark. We are the pivot, a part of Fanatics. I want to get to something that I think is really cool because when you play football, if you get a a nickname, people don't call you by it every day until you show folks, like, this is who I am, right? For you, though, it's Frank the Ghost Martin. And I love the story about it being a part of your ascension as an amateur, also a night where the lights went out. Explain to me how you got the name and why it fits you. So I say the my fighting style, you know what I mean? Sometimes I lose fighters, I have them turn in. I do certain things that'll turn them certain ways. Uh, I knock a lot of guys out with like the shots, angle shots that they don't see coming. Me just coming on the scene late, you know, beating top top guys. Uh, 20, 2015, I fought one of the, at the time to do was ranked number one in the country. I only had like 13 fights first year going to the National Golden Gloves. I beat the dude the first round of the uh, National Golden Gloves. Everybody looking at me like, they just looking at me crazy. Like the, the refs, everybody just looking. So I'm like, why the hell are these people looking at me like this? So I get out of the ring. They raise my hand or whatever, get out the ring. Everybody come up to me. They're like, you just beat Abraham Nova, number one ranked dude in the country. I ain't knowing though. Right. I'm new. I, I ain't really looking at the, the the fight brackets or none of that. So I'm just going in just fighting. Like, I don't care who I'm fighting. I'm just fighting hard, fighting tough. So I end up beating him, boom. Uh, that year I end up placing a third, I end up placing the semifinals. Boots, Dry Ennis had won it that year. The next year I had went back 2016, I went back and I won it in 2016, but the night before the championship, the lights in the hotel that we were staying in, they had cut off. Bore hall room I was working out in, lights cut off. So at the time, my coaches put their flashes on on the phone. So it's dark in the room. You see, I'm running around, sweat bag on, all that. I'm running around in the room. Everybody has stopped working out. I mean, I'm running around in the room. You just see my shadow. They put their flashes on, so you see my shadow on the wall. I'm running around in the room. So uh, my coach at the time was like, Ghost, we're going to call you Ghost. And then that's kind of how we got the name and it all came about. That swag, that confidence, where does it come from? Because we just talking before, you was like, yeah, everybody ain't built like this. We're talking about you being in the ring, you being in the middle of attention. You get your ass knocked out, you knocked out. Yeah. Where does that come from? Where does that, that psyche have to be for you to go out there like that? I feel like everybody different. You know, you got, you got fighters who... You know, they get something in front of them and they don't know how to figure it out, you know, or they might just they might just not be the same because they they might figure out, all right, this dude tougher than me or something. So they might like, you know, level themselves down. But you got the ones who who both like sometimes you get in there, neither one of them going 
going to fold. You know, you got some people who going to fold quicker than others. Some who ain't going to fold at all. So it's just going to be one of them type of them type of nights, you know, and I feel like that's what we up that's what we up against. Wait, take, do you know that though? Do you how 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 fast when you get in the ring with a dude, do you know that? Do you know if he I call him, we call him I call him lions. When you get two lions and now y'all both looking at each you other. You just you just know. It, sometimes it ain't even it ain't it really ain't even when you get in there. Sometimes you know. You know when you know. You know, like when y'all on the field, y'all know who, who, you yeah. know what I mean? And then you know the ones who y'all gonna just run over, y'all know. And it's kind of like the same with the with the fighting. Like, you just know, like, who really real and, like, who like that, you know? You right. feel it. When you're a child, right, you, you're sleeping in your room at night and you can see certain images and in, in your mind you're thinking it's a ghost. But when you turn the lights on, that image, the ghost, disappear. These lights are gonna be the brightest lights that you probably ever had to fight in. Probably your biggest fight. In preparation for this, what have you learned? Or have you learned anything new about yourself? I mean, I feel like I've been learning a lot about myself, you know, just how to stay, how to stay composed and, and just chill. Don't let nothing get to me, you know, mentally, you know, because at this stage, it's a lot more mental than it is physical, you know? So I feel like you gotta be mentally stronger than you is physically, you know, because like, they're going to play games with you. They're going to play a lot of mental games with you. So with me knowing that and feeling that, you know, you just can't break. You can't fold. You right. know, so I'm, I, I feel like I'm going to be ready for whatever they try to throw at me. As far as uh, anything that could throw me off mentally, you just got to be ready to, to, you know, deal with it. Right. And, and looking at um, a press conference and, and hearing a lot of stuff that's coming from Tank's side, it seems that he's taking that approach. Yeah. He say you're from the suburbs. You know, but boxing aside, do you think he respects you yeah. as a man? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. You know, we we got to see him. A lot of people got to see him do some out of his body type of, you know, things out of character. You know, he ain't all his press conferences. He normally more chill. He had to, you know, he would A, B, he would all them. So he had to put his tough role on. You know, he had to be, you know, he had to be tough. So I feel like that may be like nerves. That may be nervousness, you know. I was I wasn't with a lot of people. You know, I was with my pops, my brother, uh, a couple of my homeboys, and we weren't deep at all. You know, but we was cool, and that was my first time. That was my first. That was my first little rodeo. You know, going being on that stage. So you know, like I'm just natural. I'm going. It's it's all me. You know, like from the, the face off, all that. That's all me. I felt like with them, they didn't been they didn't been there. You may put on some Francis because he was saying some stuff that was. Right you know, cap. So some things, you know, he already was prepared to do and probably say, you know, me, that was my first little ride. So everything I did was just natural, you know, so. You spoke about earlier getting into boxing later in life. And that's a big difference between you and Tank. Tank was a dude that picked up the gloves as, at a very young age. The last time we saw two great fighters get inside the ring with that sort of disparity was Errol Spence, who at the time trained with Derek James and Bud Crawford. Bud Crawford was a lifelong fighter who had worked himself to that point. Errol Spence picked it up late, but just had great talent and then worked his skill set to be in that position. How much does that play into this fight? The lifelong fighter versus the guy who picked it up late that's extremely talented and hardworking. I feel like, you know, um... Styles make fights, you know, and then too, like with me, I'm just, I'm different. You know, even though I started late, I always been like a top athlete. You know, I wrestled, I played football. I've always been like the, one of the top athletes. I've never been just like me, you know, so, and then too, man, I put, I put a lot of work in, you know, to, to be where I'm at. Even me training with Derek, you know, it didn't, it didn't advance to me. Like once I start training with Derek, that's, I always be like a, Derek, a teacher. You know, so a, a lot of the, in the beginning of my career, it was more of a, basically like I was fighting off athleticism, you know, not really understanding the game. Now with me working with Derek, I understand everything I'm doing, why to do it, when to do it, you know? So it's a little different, man. And then like, even back then I was beating guys who've been doing it their whole lives, yeah. you know? I'm beating them off natural athleticism, you know? Um, not understanding really what I'm doing, just me being naturally fast, naturally stronger, you know, that, but not having like the IQ, you know? So I feel like 
me having a trainer I have and then just me always being consistently in the gym and stuff, I don't think that's going to be a problem. You spoke on uh, cap early for people my age. That means lies. You just got to, you, know, <laughs> you know, sometimes they don't know, Chan. You just got to say people my age. Yeah, yeah cap don't means lies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I made a phone call to Floyd Mayweather, right? Because there's been a lot said about a certain sparring session between yourself and Javante. You didn't lie. Yeah. What you said was the truth. Uh, tell people who aren't familiar with the story of that sparring session that story from your perspective. So I sparred his homeboy. I wasn't, I'm in Vegas. At this time, I'm trying to figure everything out. I'm trying. I, I, me being in Dallas wasn't even, that wasn't even like on the radar at that time. You know, I was going to move to Ve uh, Vegas and I was really working trying to get underneath, you know, Mayweather Promotions at that time. So I'm looking for a spot and everything. So I ain't had no sparring gear, no nothing. So I ended up, I always go to Floyd Gym and I would go to Vegas. So I ended up uh, going to his gym and uh, I'm real cool with his nephew. So they ended up asking me like, you gonna spar? I'm like, yeah. And Tank and them had just got off, I, I think they had just got to Vegas or whatever. So I ended up sparring his homeboy. Like, uh, you were giving him some rounds. I'm like, yeah, we were supposed to go six. I stopped him in four rounds. Floyd in the ring, everybody hyping it up or whatever. That's Monday. So Wednesday come, I'm supposed to spar dude. I'm supposed to spar his homeboy again. Guy who be with Tank, 640, he come up to me like, hey, you'll get Tank some rounds or whatever. So I'm like, yeah. So Floyd ended up asking me, like, you working today? I'm like, yeah. He's like, who you working with? I'm like, Tank. He says, look. And I'm like, I got it, you know? So then after that, uh, we get in the ring. Tank get in there. He want to play. You know, he want to do all this. He, he get on the rope, like, first 30 seconds of the first round. He get in there. He on the ropes, bobbing his head, boom, through that left at him. Shook, shook, shook the legs. We had a real ref, Floyd there, everybody. Shook the legs. He say I ain't, he say I ain't shake, shake the room. I shook, I shook the room, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shook the legs. He grabbed me. You know, he ended up holding me. But, but as soon as I hit him, I'm trying to throw floors. I ain't really got the, the understanding of certain things. I just hurt him. Now, boom. So I'm trying to well off on him. So he grabbed me. Boom. He clinch up, grab. So when he grabbed the ref, uh, I mean, he push, off, he push off on me, I get back on him, boom. Somehow he get me in the headlock. He squeezed down on the headlock or whatever. We got a real ref in the ring, so the ref break us up. We get to arguing, like, in between the ref. We arguing in between the ref. Uh, I'm telling the ref, like, shit, he, you know, got me in the head, like, choking on me. So then he, like, shut up, boom. He snuck me through, like, like the ref, it's the ref, me, him. So he, like, stole on me in between the ref, like, punched me over the, the ref's shoulder or whatever. So I'm like, all right. So then we get back to sparring, boom. So uh, it was just after after the, the the punch that I hurt him with. After that, it was it was just tough sparring. It was intense sparring after that. So uh, the fourth round, they ended up having to break us up, uh, get us up out the ring or whatever. Because the last time he had put me in the head, like the fourth round, he had put me in there. I'm I can't I can't breathe because he trying to choke me out. So I pick him up all the way in the air. I'm finna slam him on the ground. So Floyd and them hop in the ring. Uh, the ref. They all hop in the ring. So by the time I'm finna slam on the ground, they end up breaking us up. I hurry up, go to the bathroom, change and stuff. I come back out and then we doing a, a fight hype, end up doing the interview with me. And it just kind of, it just kind of like died down. It was kind of weird. You know, I'm thinking there's going to be something after that. <laughs> right. So it just died down. I'm looking, I'm doing the interviews and I'm just kind of just looking over my shoulder and stuff because I wasn't with nobody like that. I'm just looking over my shoulder and everything, trying to make sure nobody don't try to sneak me. That's how the sparring goes. It ain't set up. You just walk in and be like, yeah, I'll jump in with you. Like, it be all like, the professionals. That's how it go. It be like that sometimes. You know, and then you got to think at the time, a lot of times it's, it's guys who won't spar a guy who they know. At that time, they ain't really knowing me. You know, I ain't, I ain't a big name. They ain't really knowing who I am like that. So that I, I used to get a lot of sparring at Floyd Gym because of that. You know, and then I always, I always shock them. Air, air, a lot of times I was shocking a lot of people out there because they didn't know who I was. Like, out there, they be real selective of who they spar. But me, I was coming in and out of town, like, and, and getting work. Certain people knew who I was, but for the most part, it was a little easy to get work because ain't nobody really know Frank Martin at the time. You know? Yeah. And that, that'd be the thing. Even when the fight, like, selecting the fight, selecting the right fighters. Yeah. You know, they say people dodging people and all that. Is that... I want to say part of your game, but is that a part of boxing or is that just, is, is there certain people that do it? 
I wouldn't say, I mean, it's certain people who do do it, but I say that, you know, like, sometimes it ain't always the fighters that, that got a lot to do with it, you know, because it is a business. Like, your team want to move you a certain way, it may be a style that they feel that you they want to get you a few more fights or get you a similar style before you fight. That style, you know, that version, of, like, say, for instance, they can have a, 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 B, a B version of a, of a fighter, right? So they, they put you with him before you go fight the A version, just to prep you, you know, like, we're going to give you a similar style, so then when it's time for you to fight him, you've already kind of seen that style. So I, I wouldn't say, like, a lot of times people be ducking, but they do, but not all the time. It got a lot to do with the business, too. So. How long ago was that sparring session? Uh, man, that was probably, that was, that was around the time he fought Leo Santa Cruz. So I think that was like, uh, that probably about four years ago. In boxing, doubt and confidence, I, 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 it plays a, a big role, a crucial role in the psychology of boxers, right? I've seen things where, you know, some people say, um, you're just happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of doubt on yourself, but you on the other hand, you speak on confidence. Mm -hmm. Does that sparring session increase your confidence going into this fight as you think back to that? Or is, I'm sure you don't have any doubt in your mind, so I don't even want to ask you that. So does that give you more confidence going in there or is it just a you know casual everyday type thing? I feel like with that sparring session, I don't really carry that sparring session, you know, with me as like a, a confidence boost. Like I know what happened in the sparring, but I also know that I'm a different fighter than I was that sparring session. Right. And at that time, I still felt like, dang, like with me, me getting out of there and talking to myself, like, damn, okay, you done been in there with a world champion and you, you, you held your own up in there, you know what I mean? So it just gave me just more like, it ain't out of my range. Like a, a fight with him is not out of my range right. at that time, you know? And, and now I just feel like I'm, totally different than what I was then, you know? So, but to answer your question, now I don't look at the, the sparring don't give me the confidence, you know? Uh, yeah. Cause he a different fighter, you know, I'm a different fighter. It's just me, it's the work I put in, it's the, the opportunity um, that I got. It's all the, the talk of, of me not being able to do it, you know, it's, it's that, you know, that's what got me, it got me ready, it got me turned up. Your mom said she would have picked a different sport for you. Mm -hmm. Said she would rather, uh, she had obviously already seen you play football. She said she'd even rather that than what you're doing. And you mentioned being an elite level athlete. You got here though, because some things didn't go right for you and some decisions weren't made in the way they should have as a young man. That's how you got into boxing. Talk about some of those things that led a guy who was a good football player, led a guy who was a really good wrestler to pick up and move and turn the box. Senior year, I ended up getting in some trouble. So uh, I'm in the hallway. They come to my, they come to the, the classroom. I'm in, I'm in uh, history. I'm in history at the time. They, the cop and then like my head coach at the time come knocking on the door or whatever, ask them for me to come out to the hallway or whatever. So I go out to the hallway. They like, they need to search my car. You know, so they like, they searching the car. So I'm like, all right, what y'all searching the car for? So it was just like uh, somebody called and said something about your car would smell like marijuana or something like that, right? Which it wasn't, you know, but um, they ended up going to the car. And at the time, like, I'm thinking in my head, like, damn, damn, I'm like, what I'm gonna do? You know, I'm talking to myself while we walking. So I'm like, what I'm gonna do? The cop just talking to me at this time, it was a, it was a, a female cop or whatever. And then she was just like saying little slick, little slick remarks or whatever. Around that time, I was I was hot headed, you know. Being in Fort Wayne, it's more of a it's a smaller city, so it's like sometimes you can get lost, you know. Trying to trying to be, I was I was on two spectrums. I was trying to be an athlete and I was trying to be in the streets at the same time. So uh, on the week throughout the week, I was in practice. I was doing my thing during the weekend. I was on the south side of town, you know. I'm partying, doing whatever I want to do. So. Uh, they ended up searching my car or whatever, found some stuff in my car. Uh, they expelled me, but leading up to that, I'm talking to myself, like, damn, what I'm going to do? I'm like, I'm a box. Because I was like, at that time, MMA, none of that stuff was going on. So I'm like, I ain't going to do no WWE. Because I'm thinking they got the, you know how they got the uh, yeah. drawers on and everything. So, <laughs> so I was like, uh, I'm a box. Like, 
I'm a box. I've always been a fighter, street fighter. I always used to like to fight. So I was just like, I'm a box. And uh, I stuck to it because I wanted to be something. I wanted to be somebody, you know, and I just felt like anything I put my, like my all into, I'm going to make something out of it. You said Javante kind of stole on you in between the refs. Didn't you get stole on at a party at like 16 and get bust open though? Yeah. You know, you yeah. mentioned being the talking street Talking too much. <laughs> I, hey, I was talking too much. You know how sometimes you could be talking and you could be talking so good and you a scared dude and you can make him not want to fight? Yeah. I'm talking crazy. I'm talking to him. Boom, stole me. I was talking too much and I was too close. <laughs> Boom, stole me. So, I, so, so he cut me right here. So I stumbled back a little bit. But after I stumbled back, you know, I got to getting on him. I did my thing. But, but, but it ain't that easy. You so talking you about? Almost, so you was almost 18 and 1, though. Huh? You said you was almost nah, 18 nah, and 1. Nah, nah. He 18 and 1. I'm undefeated <laughs> in the streets. In the street I'm undefeated. I'm undefeated. Frank, it ain't that easy, though, just to say, oh, okay, I got some trouble. Yeah, I'm going to go be a professional boxer. It ain't that damn easy. It ain't bro. that easy, but look, I put it in my head like, I put it in my head like, I'm going to give my all to it. Like when I say, when I say like at that time, I'm talking to myself while I'm walking. Like I remember playing this day, like I'm having this conversation with myself, like, damn, I don't wanna let my mom down. I don't want my people down. Like, and then too, like I was, I had a lot of good going on for me at the time with the other sports. So it was just like, I, I gotta, I gotta do something, you know? I had wanted to fight when I was 12. My mom wouldn't let me though. So at 18, when all that stuff happened, I just ended up signing up on my own. And it was just more of just the determination of me wanting to be somebody, you know, me wanting to to do it. I ain't gonna lie, it was a time, it was a time I was in the ring. <laughs> I know sparring this dude named Angel Hernandez, right? I'm I got no, I got no uh pro, I mean no experience. I ain't never even sparred yet. So he hit me with a liver shot. Boom, hit me with the liver shot, knocked my mouthpiece out. Right? Late reaction. It was a real late reaction. <laughs> so I'm Hit me with the shot, boom. So I'm right here. I'm like, oh, like I just bent over, mouthpiece fall out. So then I get to after the sparring session, I get to talking to myself, like, damn, is this what I want to do? Is <laughs> yeah. this for me? Right. I swear to God, I'm like, is this for me? And I'm just like, yeah, this for me. When you first started, your coaches said they could see the talent right away. And I think that's what you mentioned of being a high level athlete. But they also said you had to work your way into being a hard worker into putting in the effort into the sport. How have you seen yourself change from making that decision, walk into your car, to who you are now in the way you approach the professionalism of boxing? I feel like genetically, you know, my family and stuff, like we gifted, you know, like we are athletes. So I feel like in, in wrestling, it was just like, I was just always naturally stronger. And stuff. I wasn't even technical. Like that I was just real strong and I was able to get by with just being real strong and just fast. And then, and then football, you know, football, I had to work. I had to work because at first I was trash in football and I just started working, working. I got better and better. The, like the more serious I got with it, the better I got with it. But uh, boxing, man, was just different. It was a different type of sport. Like what I had to, I had to learn work ethic. The other sports I, I worked, but I ain't worked like I worked for boxing. Because boxing is just one of them sports where wrestling is too, but I was able to get by with the wrestling. Like boxing is just one of them sports where uh, it's just you in there. You know, when you get in there, it's all about like what corners. You had them conversations like, what, did I cut any corners? Did, did I run like the, the two weeks before the fight? Did I miss out on a, on a run? There's certain things that play, play on the back of your mind when you get in them fights or whatever. So uh, with boxing, I just take it. I take it serious on a different level, you know, like I make sure I don't cut no corners, you know, so like when I get in that ring, like it ain't nothing that's on my mind that I feel I didn't do correct. So I just feel like boxing just gave me that, that maturity and that, uh, I, I hold myself accountable. You know, them other sports, I ain't really hold myself accountable. Like it's just you, you know, so. That was my question actually, cause we all come from team oriented sports background football, the ultimate team sport, and you got basketball, obviously a great team sport, soccer, all these other things. Golf is probably the only other individualized sport where, but they don't have to worry about getting knocked out. Yeah. They just kind of focus in on a little white ball. How lonely does it get in boxing? Lonely, <laughs> lonely. Cause it's like, you grind like 
since my last fight, I never got out the gym. I pretty much stay in the gym. You know, I never take too much time off, but around that time, you know, yeah, you can go have some fun and stuff like that, but for the most part, when you in the gym, when you grind it, it's just you, your trainer, and then whoever in the gym, you know, but but really everybody come out when it's the, when when you get that date, when you get that fight date, that's when the calls come, that's when everything come, but when the real work put in, the, the real grind is real silent, it's real quiet, you know, so it get, it get lonely for sure. It takes maturity which is a word you just used. The fight game is different, right? So much is about selling a fight. When speaking of the press conferences you and Tank have already had, you said it felt like some of the things he said was stuff he came into there prepared to say. Things that you said weren't true. You've had back and forth with Shakur, right? Where you had to be like, nah, I ain't ducking nothing. Mm -hmm. When that fight fell apart, how difficult is it when you're sitting at the press conference and dude is talking about Where's the girl when he's talking about how you were raised, where you come from, you know? And one thing stuck out to me in the press conference, he was like, I know everything about you. He's like, I knew, the, you said, I know the way you were gonna walk. I knew the way your team was gonna walk. How long have you been preparing to fight this dude? I mean, I've been watching him for a while, you know, not so much for the fight, you know, but you know, when you talk tank, everybody watches fights and stuff, you know? So I've been, I didn't watch his, Shit, all his fights. You know, I didn't watch the majority of his fights or whatever. And then uh, just knowing he was at the weight class, I knew it could potentially be, you know, a fight that would happen. I never thought that they would really take the fight, though. You know, so it just, I feel like it was a, a blessing in disguise with him taking it. But I've been watching him for a little minute, you know, just from on the outside, like, like him him fighting other guys and stuff. You know, I, he nice. You know, he a good, good fighter. We all know that. Jackson Marinez. Marinez, yeah. Right. You said you didn't feel good that day. What's that experience like? Because you end up stopping him in the 10th. But what is it like? You mentioned it being lonely, all the things that you have to go through to get to that position. What's the emotion when you realize, OK, today I really don't have it like I need it? You figure out, you figure yourself out a lot. When you had those type of fights, those be the fights where you like, you figure out who you are. And that night, I had a bad weight cut. Uh, you know, so it's like some things, you you know, like when you could see something, but you can't react how you want to normally, like your reaction and how it normally would be. So it was like that night I was seeing a lot of stuff, but my body just wasn't reacting in that, that manner that it normally do for me. So like certain things weren't working for me in the ring that normally work for me. So. And there I got to keep my calm even though it ain't working. I got to stay cool. I got to figure something else out. So it was a lot of like trial and error that I had to, to do up in there, you know, take certain chances to get certain things. But I feel like that fight, I had to dig. I had to dig and, and try some things to get what I wanted. You know, but he wasn't, he wasn't easy to break, you know, so I had to figure it out. Bro, the pre-fight the pre -fight stuff, you were talking about the press conferences and all and then y'all talk slimy to each other, like you talking about talking about your family, talking about your upbringing. But is, how much of that sh that shit is real, or is it marketing? Because I love it. Like, oh, he hate him, he hate him. Now they about to go knock each other out. How much of that shit is really real? See, see, on my end at that press conference, everything, everything was real. Everything was real. Like I had nothing scripted. I didn't get nothing to say certain things or none of that. I don't know on his end how it was, but even prior fights, it's never been nothing that's been scripted. But like me, I ain't the, you know how you got guys who know how to sell fights. You know, they can talk good, they can sell a fight. Like me, it depends on who I'm fighting. Like you will get to see a certain side of me. You know, like say if I'm fighting somebody, I'm adaptable. So if I'm fighting somebody who, you know, professional and, and, and stuff like that, I'm gonna keep a professional. You know, um, if I'm fighting somebody that's like a tank or somebody who talk crazy, they gonna bring out a different side in me. Cause ain't, you ain't gonna just like, just talk crazy. Like <laughs> then people gonna get to see, okay, he ain't going, you know, he, he different, you yeah. know, but it just depends on who I'm fighting. But to answer your question, I, I, hey, when it come to selling, hey, I ain't, they ain't tell me to script nothing, so. <laughs> yeah. Do that shit be real? Yeah. You say something about my mama or something, like, now it's on. Like, I see yeah. you at the public. I'm gonna jump on your ass. Yeah. Like, I ain't made like that. But I know I know the fight game is marketing too as well. Yeah. So does that shit build up? Do, yeah. does, does animosity continue after the fight? 
Nah, sometimes, sometimes. I never had I never had a fight where I was just real like beefing with a fighter, you know, to the point where like we just don't get along. You know, some fighters who like that. Yeah. But like me, I can be cordial. Like after after I, you know what I mean, do what I do to tank. Mm -hmm. He could be cool. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> that's what they say Ryan did uh, in the Haney fight. And then after that, he recently came out, even though you guys share, you know, yeah. Derek, the same trainer, he said he's going to rock with Tank. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people say, all right, well, is this Ryan trying to sell you guys' fight again? He just fake. You know what I mean? I just feel like Ryan just, he just fake. He lost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so peep this, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight, right? And Mike hadn't fought since 2005. Like, you were 10 years old at the time. So I don't know if you had a chance to see Mike fight live or whatever. I don't know. What's your thoughts on and on that fight? Are they selling that fight? Do you expect a real fight? Like, what do you really expect from it? On that fight? See, okay, that's different. That's different, right? Let me tell you why. So on that end, it's more of a, it's business, right? Fighting, period, is business. But you got Mike Tyson, a legend. Yeah. You got the legend. And then people be keep saying like, damn, but you think Mike gonna go out on this shield. And then you got Jake Paul, which is like a younger guy, which I, I do believe Jake Paul is now. He getting into fighting and he taking it serious. You got him, a younger guy, and then you got Mike Tyson. So if we talking, if we talking like business standpoint, they'll be able to make, for a longer time, they'll be able to make money with uh, Jake Paul and they'll be able to make money with Tyson, but Jake Paul on a, on a longer run than Mike, you know? So I feel like, just me, I feel like they may do something and, you know, give Jake Paul the, the win, you know? I don't see Mike letting him stop him or anything like that, but I see him, like, giving a decision to Jake Paul, you know, just for business standpoint. I don't know. I, I, I'm a Mike fan, so I'm a rock with the GOAT, yeah. regardless of whatever they do in that ring. So yeah. Yeah. I just love I, Mike. That's the thing, it's prize fighting. Right, and it's about being able to not only succeed individually so you can reach your goals professionally, but feed your family. You have roots that are in Detroit. You have roots that are in Fort Wayne. Talk about how your upbringing, the places you are from that I guess Gervonta has tried to, in some way, make a negative about your life. You know, having your pops be from Detroit, having that fighting spirit, how you grew up in Fort Wayne, with your siblings and your mother. How did those things affect you as it pushed you toward this profession? So I'm from New Orleans, right? And people who are from New Orleans, we're a certain way, yeah. right? I say it all the time, like, you're not gonna play in my face. I'm not gonna take disrespect. I'm gonna check disrespect because that's the way we grew up. We grew up where folks would talk about you and if they talked about you, we had to find a way to settle it, dap up and move on, right? You have, you come from places with fighting spirits. You know, how has that made you, Frank Martin, who you are? So I say, I say like my my pop side. That's that's the tough side, you know. That's the that's where I get my, you know, that that beast in me. That's where I get that from. And my mom's side is the athletes. They the athletes and the more uh, they got they they got dog in them too, you know. But it's a you got a you got a dirty dog and you got a clean dog, right? <laughs> but 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 it's still dog, right? <laughs> So that's kind of like, yeah. you know, it's just a mix of all that, you know? I feel like it give me balance. It give me like, I can, I can bring, I can bring the, the rough, rough side out, or I can just bring, you know, uh, the cool, not, not that ain't cool, it's still a different side, but I can, I know how to balance it out. And to that point though, cause they, as I watch the interview, they try to paint you as almost like a trust fund baby. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like the suburb thing and yeah, all that. Like, yeah. what's the narrative that you dislike the most that people try to put on you? That was the first time I'd heard that. The suburban, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, that was the first time. I don't know where he got that from. The thing that I hate the most that they try to put on me is me not being prepared for, you know, certain opportunities. You know, like, that's one thing. The the Just always feeling like I ain't ready for something. You know, I, was, I fought a dude named Michelle Revere. They were saying I wasn't ready for that, you know, just to, I just feel like what they don't know, they don't know, you know, and it's like, they still don't know a lot about me, you know, but that's one thing that bothered me is like, when people don't feel like I'm ready. How do you beat Javante Davis? Like, it's that left. 
Nah, it's more than that. We got more in the arsenal now. But <laughs> hey, but he said he he know what it is. He said the brick is. <laughs> but just sticking to the game plan, you know, me and Derek, we got a good game plan. Um, and not not falling asleep in there. You know, a lot of them dudes he fight, they be falling asleep. They'll stay in the same spot, they fall asleep, and then boom. You know, he like to play possum. You know, he'll let a dude take off on him and, and you know, he looking to find his little shot. You know, uh, so it's just being aware, being alert in there. And I just I just feel like he ain't been in there with somebody who gonna do certain things that I'm gonna do. Maybe in sparring, he done been in there, but in a real fight, speed, I can match that speed, I can match the athleticism. You know, he make a mistake, anything, like he gonna have to pay for every little, every little mistake he make. You know, go, go ahead, go back and watch him. Everybody he fight, he make a lot of mistakes. So uh, it's gonna be a lot that he can't get away uh, uh, get away with, but just capitalizing off the game plan me and Derek got, we got a good one. Going back to the press conference, you know, Tank kind of said some words, you know, when he mentioned Derek, and Derek like, shit, I'm just, I'm chilling, like, why well, I got to get, you know, the end of it. And then looking at a uh, million dollars worth of game, shout out Wallow and Gilly, they all, he also mentioned, um, Derek, Tank mentioned Derek, when he said, if you look at my first fight, the flight, fight against Ryan, then you look at Ryan and Devin, what, what was different than um, Ryan in my fight, fight than how Ryan was fighting versus Derek? So basically what he was saying was, Derek ain't changing nothing, in my opinion. He, the thing that- What are your thoughts on those comments? The thing about comments? that, the thing about that, what he don't see, he don't see. Right. You know, is. It's things that he don't see, you know, in that, that I, I seen, you know, I seen a different version of uh, Ryan than I seen when he fought Tank, you know? So it's it's things that he not gonna see because he don't know what he working, right. you know? He can, he can sit and watch and say that, but it's just things that, that, he, that he don't know because he ain't, he ain't in there. He not getting talked through certain things and on what to do. You know, so all he doing is just looking, but he don't know what Derek is, is telling the fighter or like what to what to do. That's what he don't know. You think it's kind of let me just throw a lot of shit on the wall. Let me see what's thick, what, see what type of reaction I can get out of him. Yeah, you know, he was trying to he was, you know, playing mental games. You know, at the little press, trying to do everything he could because he like a what do you say? Talking about Derek there for the check. The little female that was with me, the suburban, all that, you know, and a lot. And he said he know me, right? They've been they've been watching me, him, Kenny, his trainer, all of them. They've been watching me for like a year. They've been knowing they was gonna fight me. But uh, if he know me, he said a whole lot of stuff wrong. You know, he said a whole lot like that wasn't that wasn't on point. So I don't feel like he know me as much as he think he know me. We are the pivot, a part of fanatics and. You know, we all download the Fanatics Sportsbook app and we look at it. You're a huge underdog in this fight. What are some of the big upsets that were some of your favorites that would be much like Frank Martin beating Javante Dave? Like in boxing? Yeah. That fighters? Boxing, football, basketball. What are some of the upsets you could point to? that would give you the feeling or give us the feeling of a Frank Martin big time win over Javante Davis? Like a Tarver, Roy Jones. I cry. You know. Um, is this as big as a New York Giants wildcard team beating an undefeated Patriots in the Super Bowl? I feel like this is going to be one of them things. Cause you got to think he like the, in, in, our, in this era right now, he like Floyd. You know, he's not supposed to be beat. So I just feel like, man, when it happened, it's going gonna, it's gonna to send some shockwaves. It's, gonna... it's definitely, you know, you think Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones, too. The, the knockout and who Roy Jones was seen as. You go back, you know, and Mike Tyson was more iconic, but Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson. We I have cried. seen, we have seen, I cr yeah, like we have seen fighters get inside the ring and on that night, it be their night because they are skilled enough, because they are talented enough. And I think when I look at you, you know, I see that as a possibility for you, your team, your family. What would it mean to win this belt here when you fight soon? It's everything. 
You know, it's it's one of them it's one of them situations. Like I'm in one of them situations that a guy like me is real hard to get. You know, it's real hard to get. So like me going out here and capitalizing off of this opportunity is just like everything that I work for. It really don't get like this. You know how they say like what what's next? It's always something next, right? But it's just like the cylinder don't get no higher than this. This put me in like a, a different type of seat, you know, put me in like, he the face, he like he the face of boxing as of now, you know, so it just put me in a in a way different seat. It's not like just going, I'm going to beat a, a champion, you know, I'm going to beat a champion, the the one of the faces of boxing that the world know. Um, it's just big, you know, I'm I'm able to go take all of that, you know. And, Bro, what? Because you you brought up Floyd a number of times. We hang we with Floyd. Floyd been on the show what three times now. Yeah. Like we we hang out with him. But yeah. as a boxer, like what have you learned from him? Because I don't know if Floyd can teach you what he did. But he's also he loves to be around young young fighters. He loves to embrace guys. So what was being around talking to Floyd? Like what has Floyd taught you about fighting? And has it made you a better fighter? Because he could tell me all day to do that shit he does. I couldn't do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what what does being around a guy like Floyd do for you? He could tell you, uh, man, go run at go run at two in the morning. You know, go do it when cause cause nine times out of ten we know your opponent sleep at that time. So go run at two in the morning and go get yourself a mental edge, you know, like cause you know you out there working every night at two in the morning running. That's a lot of the times your opponent sleep. You know, it could be it could be little things that'll take you to the next level, you know, that Floyd, a person like Floyd, like if he tell you that, you gonna take a lot of heave to it and you gonna, it's gonna give you a different type of motivation when you doing it. He could show you something, you know, and, and it could be the same thing. You know, you might not be able to do it like him, but just it coming from him, it'll give you like a different type of like feel about yourself. With Tank's recent comments about Shakur talking too much and that's who he's gonna fight next. Do you think he's looking past you? I feel like he ain't looking past me, but he trying to he trying to distract himself with knowing he got to see me. I feel like he trying to distract himself. He talking about a seven fight deal. That's over with. You know, after after June 15th, that little fight deal, yeah, that's over with. You know, so you know he could do the talking. He can look past me. It's it's the wrong thing to do. You know, but. I feel like he just trying to have something distract his mind instead of having ghosts on his mind. Right. You know? I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a historical night, right? It's June fifteenth, PBC pay per view. I believe Amazon Prime streaming. Um, Benavidez will be on this card as well. The hundredth, I think, fight night in MGM history. What does it mean for Frank Martin? who picked up boxing <laughs> on his way to be a spell from high school to be on that card. Everything, you know, just just this this for the people who feel like like if you can't like a lot of times, you know, don't let nobody this is just some motivation for the underdogs, you know, or the late the late bloomers if you get into the sport late. Don't ever let when you started or what people say detour you from you know what it is you feel you can accomplish or do. You know what I mean? Go out, get your all, you know, and you know, just as just long as you know within yourself, like what's in there and what you're working for, that's all that matter. You know what I mean? Like the world could be like me, the world could be against me. Like this fight, the world could be against me. You know, I know everything I'm doing. Behind every closed door, I know what I'm doing. So like come fight night, it's gonna show. You know, all my, everything I done did, it's gonna show, you know, so just always, always, you know, just believe in yourself. That's for the underdogs right there. I love it. Man. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's the rap. That's the appreciate you. Um, appreciate you, dog. For sure. I appreciate how much you want to run this, right? Like 55. 55. Yeah. All love, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it. I got you, man. I'm gonna lock it in. When you was wrestling in uh high school, what were you wrestling at? 52. 52? Yeah, okay. I was told. Oh, so you you pretty much so when I started, when I started wrestling, I was wrestling at 52. And you know, wrestling, you got an advantage because because I was shorter, the dudes was a lot taller. Right. So I just take, you know, shoot on their legs and stuff. So when right. I first started boxing, I was boxing at 52. And then I'm I'm like, damn, these dudes tall at 52. <laughs> right. So they I'm long and tall. Right. So then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna cut down. So then I, I end up going to 41. 
I ended up dropping down to 41. And then as I when I turned pro, so amateurs, I was 41 my whole amateur mm. career. And then uh when I turned pro, I went to 35. Yeah. So that, that you shit, know. Yeah. Yeah. That shit crazy. Very appreciate you, bro. Yeah, I don't appreciate y'all. I know man. you get close to the fight too, y'all. Nah, you good, man. Man, no, man. Man, work. Man, man, we ain't trying to do it. I haven't hit bro. Mike up. Go ahead and show that nigga up. I haven't tried to hit Mike up. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. That's dope. Good art. Hold up. Limitless. They can still make a pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. They can still make a pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up.